All right, we're gonna talk about the grinder. Got it lettered today. I'm gonna show you the name on it too. Got the kayak letter today too. Also got the registration numbers on it. The state of Mississippi's been very, very slow about that stuff. But anywho, we are, uh, I'm gonna show y'all the grinder. That's the name of it. Y'all remember Animal on the Muppets, the one that was uh, <laughs> crazy, played the guitar. That's what I come up with a name on this one right here. And that's what it's gonna be as Animal. So I had them letter and put my number on it there. Again, uh, the people who try to call that number, uh, that number is not answered. It goes to a voicemail and leave a message if you're around here because that's not my real number right there and then i had them do it on this side and had her put the animal right there she did a good job on the corinne does really good so this machine is a 2550 bandit uh, why did i get the uh tires over the tracks well simply i wanted the tracks but it's a 25 month wait on the tracks and they had gotten, they had just gotten this machine in, hadn't had it too long, and I was uncertain about it, and I'm glad, I'm actually glad I did what I did. Everything I've done has actually worked out very well in my favor. The second job I did with this thing, I ran a, uh, on some Zorgia sod, ground three stumps, and when I turned around to push it in with the machine and backfill it, you couldn't even tell I had been there. Uh, the machine has a 50 horsepower Kohler diesel on it, and it has an eight and a half gallon fuel tank on it. So the very first day I ran this thing, I ran it for 11 hours straight. So I crossed several thresholds with this thing in the very first day that I run it, and that was why I went ahead and got it too, because I've got a job the one out there in the prairie's probably got a couple thousand stumps on it and to grind and and he wants them all ground and, and so it made sense i talked to him about it and he said man what you waiting on go ahead and buy it and he said you can get get it started on mine and and all and so it's given me a great area to just do one stump right after another and just grind them and grind them and grind them and grind them and so a guy said in the comments the other day i had said that i would not I did not want to grind stumps, but a guy said in the comments, he said, it's hard to give up that money as a small business. You've got to get that other money. And he's right. I've got a good friend here that told me last year, he said, Tim, he said, quit passing the stumps off. He said, you've got a mini excavator. He said, make that $300 on them stumps, dig them up. Well, I hate digging up stumps. I've dug them up bulldozers, backhoes, excavators big and small and i'd rather run naked through barbed wire than to dig a stump up so this is the next best option is this right here this machine come in at uh 62 000. of course like i said they had it weighs about 2280 pounds i think uh the next step up which is the sg75 was 80 000. they've got some coming in at the end of the year i really didn't want to pay that much money but i wanted something that would they would get the job done. It wasn't too costly and would I could roll in there and get on a stump and, and go after it. There was some jerkwad in the comments that went through on one of my first videos about this thing or second video on it. And he commented, he replied on other people's comments who were talking about the machine. He was talking about it's underpowered, it's underpowered, it's underpowered. Well, it's, it's a 50 horsepower machine. It's not a hundred and something horsepower machine. But I tell you what you can do with this thing. I rolled up to a, a four foot diameter a forked hackberry stump that was solid all across and in 22 minutes i was done with it that was eating it down in the ground way below the surface and getting the roots and i was done that's what i wanted i wanted something like that that would walk the dog and kick the back cat come on back and it wasn't like the carlton hurricane or the 2900 bandit you know something like that right there i wanted something that was small I can snatch these outside duels off real quick if I need to to get through a narrower gate. I think it comes in like 51 or 52 inches wide with the duels on it right here. And that did pretty good. So the day that I ran this thing 11 hours straight, I actually burnt two solid tanks plus an eighth of another tank of diesel through this thing, which is fine because I carry diesel on the truck, so no big deal. 
One cool thing about this dude is, is this right here, it's got a Danfoss pump on it, which is very good pumps. So you see these hoses, these are three quarters, number 12s. See that 6,000? This machine, if I'm not mistaken, where I read in it, is sending 5,100 PSI to this cutter wheel. I did not want a cutter wheel driven by belts. I just didn't want it. And then also the tracks, now that I've got this, I like this. There may be some times where I'm limited. You know, there's give and takes on everything. The tracks are gonna scuff the ground up a little bit more. This right here, I can run across the golf course if I need to, no matter what kind of situation. Hot curves really good with it. Even drip, dipping down in the holes, it's got plenty of power. It does real good, because all four wheels pull on. All four wheels has an individual uh, motor on it that pulls it. And so I'm, I'm glad that worked out the way it did, and I wanted a hydraulic motor up here that pulled the cutter wheel. I've got the new river wheel. Did some research on that, figured out that was kind of the best way to go. Uh, there's 18 of these side teeth right there, and I believe it's six of these front teeth right there. I've got uh, a little over 20 hours on it, and I've chipped one tooth. I hit a piece of rebar down by a stump over there in the prairie, but they're still working really nice it's got 20 a little over 20 hours on it that's what it's got on it pop up there it is 20.8 so i per i had this machine uh three weeks now and i purposely waited before i showed anything about it because i wanted to run it kind of get the feel of it you know for put it out there i wished i would have waited till i had about 50 hours on it uh, and of course of course the people that that pop off in the comments. There's some people that are that are never, they couldn't teach somebody something if they had to because they're too quick to pull the trigger. And and that's fine. I get it. It's it's all everybody else is an expert. You know what I mean? You know, they're they're all experts and that's that's fine. I get that. But um so this is a remote control for it. And you can see all the stuff on it there where it's at run a whole machine like this, or you can plug in a corded uh, control, which is called a tether. And you just flip this switch right there and do that. I'll crank it up here. And you have to wait on this yellow light to come on to crank it simple to engage the wheel. Once it comes, there, see it just came on. All right. The remote's got magnets on it, so it'll stick. It won't go anywhere. So to cut the wheel on, you just reach up there, flip that, and there she goes. I'm gonna lower this thing just in case it slings something out where to kind of go at the ground rather than out that way. So this one has the uh, super sweep on it, and I'll talk about that in just a second. To run it up, it's always button down right there. Watch the brake on it. See that how quick it stops it. So again, I said that it's got the super sweep. The super sweep, you can turn that on or off, and what that does is when you're sweeping left or right, when it starts to load the engine to a certain percentage, it automatically will pull the head off that cut just a little bit and let it catch up, and then you can kind of keep on going. I like that on it. Uh, the thing has a, uh, God, the magnets are tough. See, it has a bump time increase and decrease. What that does is you can set that, either increase it or decrease it. And then when you bump the button right there down, you can move, it'll move that head as much travel as you have set on the increase or decrease. So if you hit the button, it'll, you know, and you've got it set to two inches of cut, it'll drop it two inches or one inch or whatever you've got programmed in it. I like that. And so, some people, there was a guy said something about the it jumping when you move forward. The thing about it is with this remote control, this is electric over hydraulic, and so you don't have proportional stuff on this thing like working hand valves. But I'd rather have the remote than the hand valves where I can stand over here to the side where I'm not getting hit by a shrapnel or anything like that. And let me say this, 
a face screen helmet is a must of one of these things if you don't wear that uh you're pretty much asking for it but so far with it i've been very happy with it again like i said it was 62 i put this 62k i put this yeti thermos holder on there i realized i was gonna need that real quick and i'm gonna put a five pound extinguisher right here i've got a there's a bare spot in there where i can drill through that and mount a uh, five pound extinguisher in there of course it's got the push blade on the other end of it down here too with a replaceable cutting edge on if you want to do that so i had some folks get on me uh, about the slowing the swing down and again too bad everybody's not an expert right out of the box so you can slow that down in your travel speed right here they've actually got these backwards uh this one is your swing and this one down here is your travel now of course you got to keep the travel turned wide open because as you're moving from stump to stump you want to be able to move as quickly as you can and so the only time i found to slow the travel speed down is when i'm pushing with it backfilling i will once i get turned around and get ready to backfill i'll slow that thing down all right so the swing right here I've got it slowed way, way, way down. The only the, It won't even move at an idle right now. The only way it'll move is it wide open. And uh, in the video, the videos that I filmed, all that was filmed in the same day. And I was playing with that during the day. And the reason I was is because I had watched a video of a guy. He's, he, and I don't even remember his name. There's a couple stump grinders on YouTube that are, that are really good. And this guy happened to run across one of his videos. It's a SG-75, and he was, some of his stuff was just was just silk. And so I've seen how slow he had his uh, swing running. And so, like I said, I have backed mine almost closed on it. I mean, it's just, and that's what it is. Slower on a stump grinder is faster, if you understand that or get that. You know what I mean? And so the cool thing about this one too is if you do stall it, if you stall it out, all it's gonna do is open a relief and it's gonna take over on the hydraulic pressure. So you don't have any belts to worry about or, or anything like that. So uh, trying to think there was uh, something else that I was gonna mention on it, but I can't think of it right now. But this curtain over there on the other side, I actually pulled it free of one of the bolts I get out there in the truck. I'm gonna trim these curtains a little bit. I'm gonna cut them probably about two inches or so off of them because they're they're good to turn as low as they are, but as you're running through those those chip piles and everything, I need to be a little bit shorter uh, and get that get that fixed up. So I'll cut it off and I'll put it back on there and get a little bit shorter. These up here, they're okay. Well, I know one thing, you don't want to be standing about right in here at about a 45 when that head goes out of way and something swings out of it. Boy, it'll eat, eat you up right there. This is, a, this is a compartment in here where you can put teeth and things like that and where you release the brakes on it if the machine ever goes down, you need to pull it or something. You've got this other little black valve down there you screw it in and you close off the tank and then you pump this two or three times and it'll release it to where you can move it if it's disabled you need to you need to move it so you can see where i put the thermos jug mount on there for my yeti that way i don't have to tote it around with me and sit on the ground where i'm grinding i just put it right there and and uh take off you know take off with it and then this goes wherever where the machine goes uh, one thing the guy said, which I do, I do regularly, constantly, is grease. He said, grease, grease, grease. Make sure you keep them greased, and and I don't, I don't have a problem doing that. I I wear some some grease out, uh, but anyhow, the the new river teeth. These are carbide. I think they're going to do pretty good. Like I said, I chipped one with uh, well, I hit a piece of rebar at the base of one of the trees. And you're going to do stuff like that. The cool thing is here, we don't really have hardly any rock. You'll get into some places that you'll have some sandstone, but right around here, it's mostly like a sandy clay loam, something like that. The ground's not real bad. So, I mean, you can just bury it down in the ground, just keep on rolling 
as far as that goes. One thing that I did on the very first day that I run it, you know, there's things that will annoy the heck out of you. So as I was running this thing, you notice this chain right there is black and this cap is black too. This chain was chrome, very chrome, shiny silver. And as I was running it and the machine was moving, that chain kept flipping around. And so it was like a, like a strobe light flashing at me all day long. Man, it annoyed the dog out of me. So when I got home and I unloaded this thing and I got it off the trailer, that was the first thing I did is walk over and get my black spray paint and I spray painted that chain and that cap where I wouldn't see. It's amazing the stuff like that that can that can get to you, you know, and and all. But um, I'll do some more reviews of it as I as I go on and um, and we'll get it get it more situated, more dialed in to and more. I'm got. I'm probably <laughs> on the controls. I'm probably at about seventy five percent. Because when you run it for 11 hours in one day, right off the bat, you you uh, you get where you figured out pretty good. Like I said, I'm about 75% on them. Ain't quite all the way. This this strap right here goes around your neck. And then this one, you can go it around your waist. At first, I wasn't wearing nothing around the waist, but I found that I like it around the waist. Uh, it's, it's really nice. It's a funny story, which is actually not funny, but y'all may think it's funny. Within the first 30 minutes of running this thing, I got in a bumblebee's nest, and I had to leave here. I had to leave the machine. They swarmed it. I had my helmet on, had my face screen down, and I seen something black come inside my face screen. And I just thought it was like a dark piece of clay or a wood chip or something like that, you know, because stuff's flying everywhere off this thing. And, but, buddy, when that thing hit me above my eye, I knew it was not a piece of dirt. I knew it was something that stung the heck out of me. And when I looked down on my shirt, I had four or five stuck to my shirt. So I slung the helmet off, left it, took off across the field like a scalded ape, running like crazy. And they swarmed the machine. Luckily, with the remote, dang, you can stand 100 yards from this thing and still control it. And so I was able to, you know, walk back up close enough to where I could tell where the nest was in the ground. And I just wa I just drove it right up there to where their nest was and sent the head right into the uh, right in their nest. So I ended that little problem right there quick, fast, and hurt. And that's something that I hadn't thought about. You know, like yellow jackets or bumblebees or something in the ground. I'm sure there are some stunt grinder guys that's probably got some horror stories to tell like that. Because can you imagine... Had I not had the remote control then, you would have just had to just leave the machine running wide open right there and, you know, figure out, go get some spray or something. So I know there's been some guys that's rolled up to a dead gum stump because yellow jackets really like to be in the ground by the stumps and put it in the ground. So uh, I'm going to be down for a few days. Um, let's see, y'all watch this video on Tuesday yeah tuesday afternoon so on wednesday i got to i gotta have i got some more basal cell carcinoma which is the early stages of skin cancer i've had it twice now and this will be the third time and this one happens to be on my arm see that spot right there on my arm i took a sample of it about three weeks ago and took it out and of course it came back uh, positive so i go tomorrow and they're going to cut that out they do the moors uh, thing where they they go in there and they cut it and then they take it back there in the back and they look, make sure there's no cancer cells around the side of it as long as it's not. Then they come back and sew it up. If there's if they didn't get it all, then they come back and cut some more. So uh, with it being as hot as it is, and, and that's and it'll take quite a few stitches to stitch that thing up, I'm not gonna do anything the rest of this week. I'm gonna chill and uh um and just kind of take it easy and what have you and and do that and so i'll get the stitches out you know next week because i don't want to bump that thing or nothing and i'm not going to run a saw and i don't want to get hot and sweaty uh with it with it like that but so that's what that's what i'm going to be doing here uh, coming up uh this thing does push some serious air i mean you stand from there to the door over yonder and you can feel the air coming off of it it does 
move quite a lot of uh, air. So I think bang for the buck, uh, you know, what this one costs, 62, you know, best deal for me. And and so there was some guys, too, that come in, at, you know, Carlton, Rako, all that right there. Listen, I've said it lots and lots of times. you got to buy where you've got a dealer, dealer service. My nearest Vermeer dealer is in Jackson, Mississippi, and it, where I'd have to buy from. It's 150, 160 miles down there one way. Well, I have a Trax Plus store right here in Columbus in full store. And then uh, the Carlton and Rako, I have no idea where I'd have to go to buy one of them crazy things from. So I can go right there to town, and they keep everything uh, stocked for it, the teeth, filters, all that stuff like that, and make one stop right there and grab it and uh, and go. So, And that's the thing, man. If you're going to be in business, you, it's stuff's going to break. I don't care what brand it is, what color paint it's got on it, or what. It does not matter. It's going to break and tear up. And then the name of the game is, is how quick can you get me back going? So that's why I did what I did as far as that. This uh, remote is rechargeable. It's got a, uh, you just plug it in. You can charge it in your vehicle. It's right there. You can charge it, and, you know, a wall socket and everything. They give you this stuff for, for either one. But uh hope this answers a lot of questions. I wasn't really able to do a whole lot because I went down to Florida last weekend and uh, did some scalloping down there, had a good time, and got, got a limit of scallops. Got a video about that, really cool. Also got another video where I was running a 308 Caterpillar mini excavator down there, which I really wouldn't consider that thing no mini excavator. That's a heck of an excavator, but got met a really nice guy down there. He's an Instagram friend of mine. His name's Adam and um, met up with him and ran his machine for a little while and just kind of see it's got a it's got about 1300 hours on it. i was wanting to check that out so y'all probably see that video here in a day or so along with some uh, other stuff that, that i've got oh let me show you i hadn't showed this people on instagram seen this i had this built right there i'm still not quite all done with it but i'll go ahead and show it now also i have my trailer my black trailer that I just bought brand new there. Some people have seen it already on Instagram. It's orange now. Uh, so I'll show it later too. But yeah, hope y'all have a great day this evening. And uh, we'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.